ain't going back. Now I'm going to buy into all that. Hey, hey, ain't going to hide. Going to let all the fears lie. Go, mother, they just saw my side. Got a hold of the loving. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to The New Now. I'm here with Barnabas Nagy, and we're going to continue our Matrix talk. And we're looking at power and fears out of the Matrix, how to get out of the Matrix through your own powerful movements, and perhaps how you can use your fears to do so. Barnabas, hello. How's it going? Hi, man. How's it going? It's good. Good. I'm still in uh, Mexico and uh, enjoying the sunshine. As you can see, I'm lit. You so. are. You are. Yeah. I'm in Japan and it's the morning here too. So kind of on opposite ends of the world. Neither of us started yeah. to and where we are. In some ways, we've moved out of our comfortable matrix of where we were born, which is one way of looking at the matrix, you can say. Uh, one of the first videos I did with Barnabas, he talked about how he left family, friends, comfort. Even I've heard now his music studio behind to get to where he is. You know, So he had to follow a whole bunch of interesting power full movements for himself, you know, to get out of his matrix. So today we're going to look at how we can use our own life circumstances to gain more power, to see where you're afraid, and perhaps to use those to unplug yourself from the matrix so you can make a new life for yourself. Right. Yeah. Well, I have a powerful quote for you that that moved me and, and touched me quite a bit when I heard it. So, so this is, I, I'm paraphrasing, I don't know exactly, but it's something like uproot a tree and it will die, uproot a man and it will live. Good quote. And, and, I, and I think it's really powerful because if you look at nature and you uproot a tree or any kind of plant, it's usually going to die. But with a man, it's different. We are born to be wild, especially like man is you know, the, the masculine man, we need that kind of adventure in our life. Um, in our blood, we have feeling our muscles that we are here to move shit, you know, and, and we can overcome adversary and overcome difficult situations that that's what makes us tough. And like, man, you know, but that people look at us and like, yeah, this is a man. I would agree. And, and, and I think, you know, this, as, as, as you said, as you mentioned, um, you know, moving to Mexico, but I moved to different places. First, I moved to, uh, to Portugal. I already uh, sold half of my shit then at that time. But then, you know, moving over to another continent really required me to, to sell everything. Um, and, and these kind of moves really um, makes a man who he actually is in his core and tests him to be you know, to be connected to his core. And, and just because you, you lose your given roots, like your, your birth roots, that doesn't mean that you actually lose your spiritual roots. Because maybe your spiritual roots are actually going somewhere else. So I'm going to give you an example. I don't know why and how this happened, but we can go into that. I don't this video on a different one. So we, uh, I want to mention civilization reset, reincarnation a little bit. So, so if 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 that you believe in that, I believe in that. Um, perhaps some people were uprooted and put into different countries from where they were belonging to initially. So I lived in Hungary for most of my life. And I hated winter all of my life. I could never stand it. Like literally, I could never stand it. Yeah, <laughs> I go. And and I di I didn't know why. And and the last winter, I clearly remember my body. I tried to listen to my body. My body told me this is the last winter you you have because I just don't want to take it anymore. And I and I packed up my shit and I decided I'm gonna move from Hungary. I'm going to go to to find a place where there is no winter. So first I went to Portugal, but the winter was still, you know, mild, but but still a bit cold to my liking. And I like this weather where there is literally like the whole year round. It's hot. It's real hot. So so I don't know why me, why I was put in Hungary, 
there could have been a reason, it could be the language or the theory or whatever. Um, but I believe my body or somehow my spiritual being belongs here. You know what I mean? So I think these kind of things really helps a man to explore himself and go where he really belongs to. What do I you think? think? I think I, I would agree. Like I'm from Toronto and the winters there are horrible as well. And, you know, I thought it was normal to have, you know, three months of or four months of good weather and eight months of horrible weather uh, until I started living, you know, in Southern Japan, where it's, you know, more like eight months of good weather and four months of bad weather, which, you know, I hear you, it's still mm-hmm. almost, almost not enough for me when it's cold, but, uh, you know, overall, you know, it doesn't get below the negatives. And, uh, you know, from where I am, you know, when negative 20 seems normal, now I look back at it. Or, and I visited one winter my family in, in Toronto when it was negative 20, and I, I don't know how the hell I lived there all, all, all that time. But, but more importantly, what, what I wanted to do is kind of connect this to maybe the spiritual aspects of things. You know, so we have two men that were born in, in weather they don't like. And you know, perhaps, though, it's not the same as if you were born in Mexico, let's say, or if I was born in the Caribbean, right? You wouldn't have mm-hmm. the adversity, as you said, of realizing you don't belong or you don't want to stay where you're not comfortable. And so you have the fortitude and the attitude and the, 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 the metal, uh, M-E-T-T-L-E, the metal to, you know, to grow a spine and to grow a pair and to move to where you, you need to go. And you know, what I want to do is maybe, you know, you mentioned reincarnation. I kind of believe it. I kind of don't. It depends on how, how you define that. But uh, maybe that could be why a lot of people go, what am I doing here? Why am I in this life? Why am I on this planet? Why is there viral shenanigans everywhere? Why is the government mm-hmm. locking me down, taking away my food, whatever you want to mm-hmm. be, you know, you know, stealing my job. And it could very well be uh, the metaphorical analogy of what you mentioned of the winter of the soul, right? The dark, uh, the dark tea time of the soul, as, as you paraphrase, where people have to go through their own spiritual winters and learn how to move away from that so that they can gain whatever is required for them to grow happily, like you said, to uproot themselves, so to speak, as you mentioned, and to, you know, see where that takes them, you know, maybe they need to move before they can flower, if you want to keep the, you know, plant analogy uh, going, what what do you think? Yes, yes, and I I think, I think you mentioned a good word, which is learn. So you can go through any kind of trouble in life, but if you don't learn from it, you are still going to be stuck. So I think whether you want it or not, life is going to throw at you some shit and it's up to you whether you learn from it. Right. And this is, this is what I guess separates people from people, whether they can go through life in a way that they end up where they want to end up, or at least close to it, or at least they are on the way or they just never find it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying I found it or I'm always finding my stuff on the way, but, but I, I learned from my mistakes, you know, and I, and I know my mistakes or, or even just, even if it's not mistakes, but just like hard times, you know? So I think learning is a really important aspect of this and, and to realize what you can learn from it. So you have to have the mental capacity mental and spiritual capacity to realize what you can learn from this situation. Right. And I would say, why is that important? Right. As far as if you look at, you know, Barnabas, I, and I had some conversations with him before we got on, seems to me to be a very practical fellow because he likes to see practical results from practical experiences and practical efforts. And, and I would agree with him. So practically speaking, what does this kind of experience give you? Right. You know, we, 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 I'm titling this Power Out of the Matrix. And let's say looking at it in that, you know, by having these experiences and having these hard times and learning, you know, as Barnabas said, he's becoming stronger internally. And so his power is growing or, you know, anybody that does that, their power is growing. And since this is titled Power Out of the Matrix, you know, perhaps that's how you look at getting out of the matrix is by helping your own personal power, your own level of understanding, your own level of energy grow. And from there, you're able to take more chances, do different things, because it takes a bit of, you know, balls, comfort, energy, power, and desperation, let's say, to move yourself, you know, from one place to another. (laughs) And yeah, and uh, how do you get the kind of uh, uh, energy required to do that, perhaps, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, and and one thing I want to talk about, and and I want to talk about from a 
previous video where Barnabas and I touched base on forgiveness. And I think in some ways we were talking about two different definitions of it. And the reason I want to bring that up right now is when I said forgiveness, I didn't mean the old, oh, it's all right, you can do anything bad to me, uh, That that's okay, you know, there, 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 I can take it sort of mm. bullshit forgiveness, because I'm not interested in that either. From a practical level, how I've used forgiveness is basically to see how I've been a shit heel, let's say, in the same situation as someone I'm angry with. Let's say they cheated me, they robbed me, they were mean to me, they were whatever, they, they didn't show up for a meeting, they, they lied to me, you know, put in your own uh, experiences here why you may need to forgive someone. And how that helped me gain the power to get out of this matrix is I sat back in my own meditative way, or I took a walk or whatever. And I said, well, even if it's metaphorically speaking, how have I been that way in my life, whether it's to mm -hmm. myself or someone else, like maybe someone's mean to you, and it doesn't mean you're mean to other people. Maybe you're just mean to yourself internally, for example. Mm -hmm. Like a, lo a lot of ladies are like that. They're not mean outwardly, but they're mean to themselves inwardly. And mm -hmm. so if let's say their boyfriend or husband or friend is treating them poorly, uh, this is just an example I'm given. Maybe they could sit and figure out for themselves how they're treating themselves poorly. And by mm -hmm. forgiving them, it's not like they can continue to treat you poorly because obviously that's not okay. They may mm -hmm. see how they've been treating themselves poorly stop that. And by doing that, they may gain some new insights or wisdom that can help them make their own moves out of their matrix. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I meant from that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it's about the definition and, you know, what word you use for it. For me, it's more like learning, you know, we, but we talk about the same thing. So you learn from your mistakes or you, you learn from trouble sometimes. And I think if you, if you have been treating yourself badly, you could, First of all, a realization comes first. You have to realize that you have been doing that. And then you learn from it and try to change. So there's three steps. Your realization, the, what was the second? <laughs> I'm getting out of, oh, getting off track. Uh, so realization, you, um, you change and take action. For sure. So, so, so you need, need to go through the process and you can't, can't just skip it. You know, you can't just look at someone else and, hey, he's doing good. It doesn't, doesn't work that way. No. And that's what so, I meant by using forgiveness as a tool for the realization. That was it, right? It's like, mm -hmm. how else are you going to, like, what are you going to use as the signpost in your life that you need to change something? Usually, and we were, I talked about fears out of the matrix, usually something's happening you don't like, obviously. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like something, whatever it is, right? Everyone has things in their life that happen that they don't like. Could be their health they don't like, right? Could be the weather, mm -hmm. <laughs> could be their friends, could be their relationships, whatever. And if there's something you don't like, if you blame someone, right? Or it's their fault, then nothing changes in your life, right? Because then you're sitting there as a victim and victims never do anything except cry, right? But if you're mm -hmm. taking powerful responsibility for the circumstances of your life, whatever that is, like Barnabas didn't sit in Hungary and cry that, oh my goodness, I can't believe my parents laid me here. Or, you know, then Portugal did whatever it did. I'm going to do something else for his own reasons, right? I, I didn't yes. stay in Canada and go, oh my goodness, I hate the winters. This is horrible. I wish it would change. I said, okay, I'm going to move myself elsewhere where I can have a different experience, even if, you know, I have to change yes. a whole bunch of my life, right? That's exactly it. And, and, and that's where you, you, you find these complainers all the time. And I don't have a problem with complaining. I complain all the time, yeah. <laughs> but I fucking do shit. I change when I when I complain about something. I complain so much that that I I kind of like freak myself out. And I'm like, Barbara, stop this, stop this. And and complaining is enough. And you have to change something. But but there are people like um, I'm sorry that I bring up my parents. Um, but um, they are a good example and they have been teachers for the rest for their whole life and they've been complaining about it all the fucking time and we told them um, as um, their uh, their sons hey why don't you change jobs and yeah I can't because this and that and family and house and blah 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 so there's always something why you can't do thing Mm. do something and 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 you you then create your own prison your own mental prison why you cannot do certain things <clears throat> i could have told myself so here's an example 
I had a friend who was in Portugal with me. He was an Irish guy. And um, we actually came from Hungary and said, okay, let's go to Portugal because Hungary is not good. We basically had that same, same intuition. Let's go there. We went there. He was a little bit late, but he came there. Okay. And then we decided, let's go to Mexico. But then he came up with all of those excuses. I don't have enough money. I don't speak Spanish. I don't know the country. I don't have any friends there. And I could have said the same thing, except that I had a little bit more money than him. But I had the same problems. I didn't speak Spanish. I don't know the country. I don't have friends there. So, but I didn't make that mental prison for myself. And I just said, fuck this. And I'm just going with the flow. And I'm going to try. But the reason why I was able to do that is because I exercised my mental strength a lot before. This was not my first jump. You know, if you, if you jump first time in the cold ocean, it's tough. Right. But if you did it 20 times, you know what to expect and you just do it and, and you know something else is going to wait for you. And so I had lots of these experiences being in my life when I had to decide and take big decisions where my life changed from zero to hero. And um, and and, you know, I I was I'm used to this. So I know that I'm not going to die because of this. Perhaps it's going to be bad. Perhaps it's going to be tough, but it's going to be all right at the end. You know what I mean? I do. I hear exactly what you're saying. You know, from so many times I've had hard experiences in my life. I remember talking to my friends or my wife at the time, you know, you don't have any money or you don't have any food or you don't know where you're going or whatever, like whatever, whatever challenges you want. And I went, you know, I look back at my life and I go, you know, today I'm okay. I think I'll, I'll do a merch t-shirt saying that today I'm okay because I looked around and I've had hard times and I've had, you know, whatever times I didn't know where I was going to live or sleeping on the side of the road when I was going across Canada in a, in a van or you didn't have any money and then food showed up or you didn't have anywhere to live and you end up sleeping in a tent on, on a mountain for a few months. And, you know, I've had all these experiences and then suddenly someone gives you a job painting a rich guy's cabin and you have money or, or you know, someone mm -hmm. shows up with an extra salmon because they, they liked you. That's happening. All these things have happened to me. I'm giving some examples. And so I had yeah. plenty, you know, someone killed a wild boar and brought me some food one time when I was in, in the mountains in, in British Columbia. And, I, you know, these things that I didn't expect and, and I couldn't mm -hmm. have thought about them, but, you know, my life was such that I was making my own challenges, my own movements, my own feelings of wanting to be different. And the world somehow looked after me. You know, I, I don't think that we come to this planet or we're born here without the resources required to have a good life, I would say. We mm -hmm. just have to rediscover them if you've lost them along the way. Yeah. But even, even in those, your examples, you were kind of like, you, you have done similar things before. So you were trained your mental, you had the mental strength to do those things, right? Because you made those changes before in your life. Not always. Eventually. I mean, originally I'm talking about, you know, I was in Toronto up until I was about 30, right? I stayed in pretty mm -hmm. much the same part of the world for a long time. Mm -hmm. And my life just got to the point where I said, horrible, horrible. I have to leave. And I actually moved originally to the middle of Mexico. And then I saw dead people. I saw pigs slaughtered off of, off of trains. I remember walking through a graveyard and sinking up to my hip one time and, you know, seeing the parts of Mexico where they would kill you for a bottle of whiskey uh, if you weren't careful. And, you know, so I had the kinds of experiences that were directly opposed to, you know, a gentrified sort of experiences, middle-class uh, a Toronto uh, kind of guy, like, you know, I was a stockbroker for eight years. And that allowed me, though, as you said, like, originally, you have to take the plunge. And then you have maybe the kind of experiences where you realize you have more resources than you thought you had uh, on, on yeah. an internal level to succeed when your brain maybe or some of your thoughts are telling you you're, you're gonna die, you're gonna die, <laughs> or, or, or whatever it's saying. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I clearly remember for me, the biggest um my best decision in my life was when I left the university. So my parents were so upset and they said, I'm going to be, you know, um, a cleaning personal, cleaning toilets all my life because I, I am not going to have a university degree and not, not going to have a real job, whatever that means. And, and bless God, I don't have a real job because, because that kills you as well. And, um, and so, but no, actually, actually I have, I, I've been more successful than, than my other brothers, whatever success is, but um, I, I would say I, I was able to have money for investments and, you know, travel a little bit, not like my other brothers. So, 
so yeah, um, this decision was a big impact in my life. And, and it was, I was so happy when I did that, you know, when I walked out the gates of the university, I still see it. I see it in, in my eyes and I told myself, I'm not going to return to this anymore. And I didn't. I mean, I hear you. When I was in university, I quit and opened up a comic book store in Toronto originally, a manga store. And that's where I met the fellow to this day. I do the editorship with, I do the books with, like, and I met him at the store and mm -hmm. it changed everything because I went from them telling me, like, I tried to be a lawyer. I spent a, a week in political mm -hmm. science and I said, there's no way I'm putting this shit in my head. I said, this is just crazy. And I quit and I took creative science fiction writing course instead at the university for the rest of the year to allow my imagination to grow. And mm -hmm. in relation to that, in relation to the topic we're talking about, I would say if you're sitting in your life and you want to get out of your matrix, you don't like the matrix, you know, you don't like what the government is doing, you don't like what your friends are doing, you don't like what your country or life is doing, you could look at the ways that you can change by using your imagination, by facing whatever it is that, like Barnabas said, he has an excuse, right? A house excuse or a home excuse or a family excuse yeah. or a mom. So you, you can look at those fears and see why or how they're stopping you and perhaps figure out for yourself how you can go the opposite way. Maybe other ways to make money, other ways to feed yourself, other ways to have relationships. You know, maybe you want to be polygamous. Maybe you want to be celibate. Maybe you want to be whatever, right? You know, maybe you want to, you know, get into one relationship or out of another. It really doesn't matter. But I'm thinking if you're unhappy or unsatisfied or full of fears from whatever, the best way to get out of the matrix is to find your own power. And the best way to do that is to face in yourself wherever you feel maybe you need some work, maybe where you're weak or maybe where you need to, you know, get off your ass and take a chance, you know, make a leap, see what's uh, what's possible for you in ways you've never done something before. Yes. And, and, and I think, you know, it, it could be that you, you can look at it uh, from what you said, like how you can change things around and, and do different things so that you don't take the sacrifice. But in my opinion, actually, you have to do the sacrifice. Sure. So, so what, sacrifice what in do you my mean, experience though? Is, is, is necessary. So like, okay, um, you have these excuses and that usually these excuses come to you because you not need to make a sacrifice, right? So in, in the case of my, my parents, they would need to take the sacrifice of being secure in their job because they have the diploma to be teachers and to change their, their career. For a couple of months, they wouldn't have a job. They would they mm. would be spending less money and so on. In my case, when I came to Mexico, I had to sell my shit, and I and I was waiting thirty five years or thirty four years to put together a studio that I really wanted. So it was my one of my life goals to produce music, and my God, I had to sell all of that. That was a big one, and but but I was trained to have these sacrifices, and and I tell you why. So when I, when, I, when I had this opportunity or this idea to go to Mexico, then I was browsing through Instagram and there was, um, I don't want to mention the, the hashtag because I don't want us to get um, censored, but this, this hashtag, I followed the hashtag and I checked the, the post on, on Instagram and someone said who was traveling in Mexico that if you don't sacrifice for what you want, what you want will become your sacrifice. Mm. Mm. And, and that hit me in the head. And I was like, yes, that's, that's pretty, much, pretty much it. You know, I've been living by that, but I couldn't put words on it. And this is so beautifully putting it. If you don't sacrifice for what you want, what you want will become your sacrifice. Because in this case, like my main thing was really, I want to uh, escape the bullshit. Okay what's happening in Europe and because, because it made me depressed and I didn't want to be depressed because like I can have the best studio and I did, and I had a really good studio, but I didn't want to produce music because I didn't meet people. And, and uh, you know, I didn't have a social circle like that. You couldn't go out and, and I felt depressed. So I didn't want to do that. So I was like, I want to have a life, even if that means I have to sacrifice for it. And then what I want is to have a life. It's not really the studio. It's not really the tangible, mm -hmm. you know, monitors or guitar. It's really, first of all, I want to live free, you know, and if I can produce music next, next to it, great. 
but if not, still want to live, you know? And so for what I want is freedom. I had to sacrifice something. So I would agree. I, 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 that's the best way I, I can, I can see it. Maybe I've even come up with a new title for this video, you know, sacrifice for freedom. Uh, I, I would yeah. say that's, that's honest in that if you don't like something, you have to, you know, close one door or kill something to live a new life. And that's why a lot of people I find are afraid to move because it feels like something's dying when mm -hmm. you have to give up a job or a relationship or a comfort or a food or whatever. And it's true. Something is dying. But if you and, look, it's, and it's necessary and it is, that's the thing. I mean, if you look at the circle of life, you know, life and death and, you know, something has to sacrifice for something to live. You know, you have to be dead to be reborn if you want to look at the reincarnation side of things, uh, you mm -hmm. know, if you believe it that way. So it's true. If you're holding on to something, whatever your fear is, which is some, and, and, and by sacrificing it, I found you get the opposite of what you think is going to happen. You think something bad yeah. is going to happen. And that's why I found if I go to my heart, it's like, what you, what would you love? Right. I mean, if your parents mm -hmm. would love to not have this job, let's say they would love to have the freedoms of not being tied to all the bullshit that they didn't like about their life, but they mm -hmm. weren't willing to follow that love. Instead, they listened to the fear, afraid of sacrificing the comforts, security, you know, paycheck, whatever, yeah. whatever friends living yeah. next door, the house they've had for 25 years, Whatever they, exactly. they, decide, they decided they didn't want to sacrifice. And because of it, they're living poorer lives. And I don't mean just his parents. My parents are well are in similar boat. You know, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've talked to them many times of leaving their house, mm -hmm. leaving their city, leaving whatever. And oh, I can't, I can't, you know, fill in your own reasons. Yes. And they weren't willing to sacrifice. And yes. so they're comfortable. But in my opinion, their love is very much diminished as in love for their mm -hmm. own life. Yes. And that's, I think, the most important. If you don't have love for your life, you know, then what do you really have? You know, like you can have tangible goods, but what is that? Is it going to make you happy? Really, it really doesn't. Um, it's, it's proven and tested, you know. Um, there, are, there are lots of uh, rich people who are miserable. But, um, but I want to go back to what you mentioned about what you love. Because I came up with this system. I, at that time, I was still a Christian. But um, I realized I had a, a dilemma. Just It was before the university. It was whether I go to music school or not. I loved music, but I didn't like classical music that much to learn it and, and to learn, you know, like all the, you know, music sheet and everything. Um, classical music uh, stuff. And so, but that was the only way to get to the academy and, and deal with music in a, in, a, in, a, um, in a regular way. And so I was like, okay, I want to deal with music, um, but I don't know what to do. And I took a couple of guitar lessons, but I didn't like it. And so I quit. And that was, that was a big, you know, big decision for me because I felt like, you know, maybe I decided against myself, against that becoming a musician but I just knew I don't want to play that kind of music. I want to play only my music because I'm a singer songwriter. So I write my own songs and I don't want to play other people's songs, even though they are good. Um, and, and so I took the plunge and, and I sacrificed for this. And, and, and I, and I understood that it's, it's better like this. And what I came up with this came up after this experience is, two columns on one column i write down what um what my heart says and what i would love to do and on the other heart, other hand side i write down what i should do and what my mind says right because what i what i want to do and what i love to do and what i should do is usually totally different you know like what you should do is usually some kind of programming from culture or your own limitation, limiting beliefs. And, and I found at that point when I made that decision that when you say I should go to music school because it makes sense, it's usually not the right thing to do. Mm. But when I say I love to play my own music and I want to become a musician, that's the way. And I don't know what will happen. That's the other thing. It's maybe not a sacrifice sometimes. It's just the unknown. 
But the unknown is a sacrifice because we like the comfort of knowing what will happen. We like to know this is what's going to happen, but sometimes we don't know what's going to happen. So we have to sacrifice the, the known, known for the unknown and have to go with the what we love and want to do rather than what we should do. You know what I mean? I do. I, I, it's, it's really, in some ways, it's become an easy understanding of knowing I didn't know. I mean, maybe you have to uh, come to that point in your life where, you know, Barnabas has done lots of videos on, on, on what the matrix is and the illusions, and there's been thousands of others out there. And, you know, that's okay as a study for anybody that wants to see, you know, the outside world is telling them things that maybe are true and maybe are not true. But something that all of us can do, as Barnabas said, is you can make your two columns or two, uh, two, 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 two lists, and you can see for yourself without what's going on in the matrix, without what's going on on the outside, without any permissions or, or, or any of those things or any of the agreements, you know, what you love and what you don't love and what can work for you and what can't all in relation to what you would like. And, mm -hmm. and, if, and if that's not working for you, then perhaps you have to at least sit down and do a bit more studying of the self or self-study as to yes. why you can't figure out what you need to figure out in where you need to go. I mean, sometimes... You just know what you need to move away from. And that's all you can know. Right? And sometimes that's good enough. And that's you know, good enough, yeah. You sometimes you don't know what you actually want, but you know what you don't want. In my case, in this example, I knew that I don't want to play classical music. And and I I, I, I had no fucking idea what's going to happen. Like, how am I going to do this? And I still don't consider myself a successful musician, but fuck it, you know? I, I love and I play music. And even if some, someone comes to me at the beach and says, hey, that's great music, one person, I'm happy, you know, but, but I just wouldn't, wouldn't want to be, uh, you know, playing for thousands, thousands and millions of people on classical music and, and I don't like it mm. and feeling miserable, you know, but getting all the attention or whatever. Yeah. So if you know what you don't want, yeah. I mean, that's a starting point for anybody listening here. Right, because everyone mm -hmm. knows what they don't want, and then the next step could be okay. You have to move away from what you don't want. You know, we're talking a little mm -hmm. bit about how to get out of the matrix. So, if you're moving yeah. away from what you don't want, immediately you're going to be faced with the fears of moving. I mean, that's just I think a normal thing for everyone. And then that's how you can look at your own personal power, your own battery, your own way to unplug from the matrix is to see where your holes are. And by holes, I mean things you're afraid of, things you won't do, mm -hmm. perhaps that you need to do. And, you know, this could be a bit of strategy for anybody listening in that, you know, if you look at what you don't want to do because you're afraid of something, then that's a fear you can study and understand for yourself why that particular fear is stopping you from moving away from what you don't like, whether it's a religious mm -hmm. fear or a monetary fear, a physical fear, a comfortable fear, a spiritual fear. Again, fill in your own reasons as to why you have that fear, but it's your fear and blaming anybody for it, a government, a matrix, a system, a, 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 you know, a pant size, whatever, isn't going to help you one bit, you know, in my opinion, it's your fear, right? And it's sitting with you. So if you're saying, well, I would like to, but the government won't let me, or I want to, but, you know, I'm, I'm white, I'm black, I'm tall, I'm a lady, I'm short, I'm fat, whatever it is for you, <laughs> you know, you know, it, it, you know, you know, it's, and so I can't, I mean, it's still your fear. And it's nobody's mm -hmm. responsibility, but your responsibility, because if you're sitting in a room and there's no one there and you're still afraid of something, that's still you. And if you mm -hmm. study you and figure out you and you know why you are afraid of this, maybe you can figure out ways to incorporate that fear into your life and move with it anyways and see what happens from moving away from where you don't want to be. And perhaps that will, as it has for Barnabas and it has for me, give you new options for your life that will uh, maybe allow you to put those fears to one side one day. All right, everyone, we had a bit of a jump. We have to jump from one system to the other. You know, we're talking, uh, it's funny, a little bit of a metaphysical thing going on here and that Barnabas and I have been talking about sacrifices to move along, you know, getting rid of the fears and uh, keeping at it, I would say. You know, if you make one mistake and things aren't working, you know, try another way when you know what to move away from. And we've changed systems. We've uh, gone back and forth. And here we are continuing on. Hey, Barnabas. Hey. Yeah, I mean, the system doesn't like us to talk about this, it seems. It's, uh, it's protesting quite a bit. Yeah, I've seen this happen a lot. I mean, if you talk about the matrix, it's really interesting in, in what the matrix is made from, you know, whether it's your energy or energies watching you or energies you're projecting or energies you're creating. But 
you know, as soon as you start uh, talking about unplugging from the matrix, let's say, and getting rid of your fears and moving away from things, it starts to uh, jump around a bit or give you staticky, or maybe, maybe that's one of the reasons a lot of people won't move away from their life. You know, what do you think about this? Like mm-hmm. your parents or my parents is that, you know, when you start to unplug from everything you're familiar with for a little while, you're plugged into nothing. So you're kind of yeah. floating in, in in no man's land, so to speak, or no woman's land, if you like, uh, purgatory, whatever you want to call it. And you have to be okay without, uh, with, with knowing you don't know until you yes. do in moving to your next. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if you, if you look at the, the trilogy, the matrix tr- trilogy, Neo was captured in the, in a, in a transitional world in between the machine world and the real world. If you remember, I think it was a second, second episode. And then he didn't know how to get out of it. It was like a circle. So, so maybe sometimes we, we got to do that. And, and, you know, we have to give up control, which leads me to one video I, I've seen. This was by uh, an Indian guy, an Indian kind of like um, yogi or whatever. I don't remember his name. And um, he said that lots of people are angry about life and what's happened to them because it seems like life or the universe doesn't play ball, mm. right? And I'm, I'm doing that too, so I'm not... Not, uh, not an exception, but he said the solution is to realize that you don't have control. You never had, you, you never have, and you never will have control because the things that happen, happen in the world is, it's not just you, it's, it's other people and, and entities or whatever. You know, and and things just happen. I mean, you can control certain elements of your life and you can put your energy to certain things, but still what will happen next, you know, whether it will be raining or not, or someone uh, in your family dies or whatever, these kind of things you can't control. I think, so, but but you do have control of yourself, a hundred percent. Yes, yes, yeah, a yeah. hundred, and and that's yeah. what I that's, you know, I can give an example, so to speak, of of, of forgiveness. So to, in, in that, I would always try and let's say talk with one or two people. They would be late for meetings, or they would not stand up to what they said, and you know these sorts of things. And I would blame them, which could be obvious. It's like their fault for being late, or their fault for not listening, following up with their promises, or their fault for telling me one thing and doing another. And I'm sure we've all had those experiences mm-hmm. until yeah. I eventually took responsibility for the kind of people I was doing business with, or the kind of people yes. I was choosing for my friends, or the kind of people mm-hmm. I had decided to trust. So it wasn't that yeah. they weren't being whatever, uh, you know, not not people of their word and not responsible and not on time, but by taking responsibility for the fact I was choosing to make appointments with these kind of people. And then I stopped doing that. You know, they didn't change. I changed. Mm-hmm. I decided that I was going to do business with more loving people or more, you know, whatever, or I was going to have friends that were more like this and less like that. And so then my circumstances changed and the kinds of interactions I changed, they didn't change at all. But since I changed myself and how I was doing things, everything in my life changed from there. So again, no responsibility for how they were playing ball. I just decided to, let's say, take my ball and go play a different game somewhere else. Yeah, absolutely. My point was only the initial effect you receive. You don't have control. You have control how you respond to that. Yes, right? I, would, I would agree. So you, you don't have control whether someone is going to be late, but you have control whether you're going to keep contact with that person. Right. You know, even even people that maybe not don't like this, like when you're little and you don't have control out of the outside circumstances, maybe your parents, maybe the schooling that gets pushed on you, maybe all kinds of other bad things that I've heard have happened to people. And when you're small, it's true you don't have control. And there's a big difference between it being your responsibility because it's not for the bad bad things maybe that happen to you. But what is your responsibility, as Barnabas said, is how you allow that to make you the kind of person you're going to become when you get older. Mm-hmm. You know, we've all had horrible or experiences we haven't liked when we're children. And a lot of people take that forever, blaming mommy, <laughs> blaming daddy, blaming Uncle Joe, blaming you know Aunt Sylvia. And, you know, I'm not saying they were good people because maybe they were horrible people doing horrible things for horrible reasons to horrible little Mm -hmm. people. And it's certainly (laughs) possible. You know, it happens all over the world. But what you do when you become responsible or a responsible adult 
whether you're 16 or 66, and you take those experiences and you use them to make the kind of life you would still like to live, regardless of those challenges, I would say, you know, that's maybe you have to sacrifice those memories. Even at that point, you're only, you may be not even sacrificing anything real. A lot of people have to sacrifice an old wound, the memory of, you know, yes. something that happened when I was six. And so I'm angry mm -hmm. at women forever. Or I'm angry at men forever. Or I'm, you know, yeah, I never, yeah, yeah. never, never trust, you know, another, whatever, you know, fill in your own blank. And exactly. maybe, maybe it's <clears> as simple <throat> as sacrificing a memory, which is. That's, that's a good point. Sacrificing a wound. Yes. Yeah, so letting go. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I want to circle back to what you mentioned before we got disconnected about knowing knowing yourself and and your fear because I I put down a couple of notes here. Okay. And 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 both of which is again I'm circling back to matrix because we are talking about the matrix and and I think the um the trilogy is now four episodes from the the matrix is i think is a really great movie to to understand life it's it's full of uh, metaphors and and wisdom if you are if you know what to look for so one thing was when 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 neo went to the, to the oracle uh if he's the one and the oracle said you know, look at look up there and it's it's in latin know thyself it's it starts with that you have to know yourself and what you want and what you don't want, you know, what your needs are and what, 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 what you don't need, you know, when, when you have to sacrifice and sometimes when you don't, you don't want something, you have to go away from it, but it's, it starts with knowing yourself. You have to know yourself and lots of people. That's what I, I, I see that I see zombies. I see people without much conscience or NPCs that, that don't, <clears throat> don't know they don't know themselves they don't know what they want they don't they are just floating and um i don't think that's that's a very high life form for that matter <laughs> and um and the other thing i wanted to point out is is when uh, neo was going to do the jump the first jump <clears throat> the jump program and then morpheus tells him um you have to let it all go neo um uh, fear doubt and disbelief and and i think that's that's where you know most people don't make the first jump and and it's an it's a metaphor neo made the first jump and he failed he he didn't jump through the the gap between the two skyscrapers right he fell but he didn't fail at the same time he failed and he didn't fail he failed because he didn't successfully jump between the two sky skyscrapers but he succeeded because he made the first jump if you make the first jump it's already a success because you took the step because most people don't even take the first step towards what they want or what they what they you know um what their goal is or what you know away from what they don't want so i think taking the first step is super important and i think it's so part of natural law you know if you set yourself to do something to take the first step and then things will come to you it may you may not know after the first step where you are or whether that has been a good step but at least you're moving you keep going and then you can adjust for sure i mean you're not going to find who you are or how you are or what you can do or what you can't do until you take a chance, you know, and if you fall on your ass exactly. and you get up again, then maybe you won't do that the second time, or maybe you won't do it the 12th time, but at least you're giving yourself a chance to fail 11 times before on the 12th time you decide that, uh, you know, that's not going to be the case. And, uh, and if you don't do that yeah. in the first place, you're never going to get anywhere. And it's a matter of, I would say, getting out of your thoughts, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and getting into your actions, because if your thoughts are telling you, you can't do something, you know, your actions might show you a different result. Yeah, like even what, what we mentioned last time, getting, you know, being out of your mind is some sometimes mentioned as, as something negative, but but it's actually positive because if you're out of your mind, you know, you are somewhere else, you're probably in your in your core, in your spirit, and and that's a better place to be. But I think I think it's really important these these three aspects when we want to get out of the matrix uh, that we create for ourselves and and or we let the world create for ourselves is to let go all the fear, doubt, and disbelief. And we already touched on the fear. We didn't talk about the doubt <clears throat> and the disbelief, but these are all aspects of it. And I think they mentioned these three for a reason. 
Yeah, I mean, if you understand your belief system, I, I highly mm -hmm. recommend there's a video out there by Scooter Rockets called The Evil of mm -hmm. Belief. And, you know, basically what you believe is true or what you disbelieve is not true. And if you understand uh, the fact that we're creative beings mm -hmm. and if you want to get out of the matrix and maybe you realize you are making the matrix as well, you're participating. It's not you're, you're not a, uh, a victim where this is happening to you. Oh, my goodness. The government's doing this or this is this or this is happening or they're they're crushing the dollar they're crushing the oil they're crushing my food they're crushing my mother uh that you know i'm a victim i'm a victim <laughs> you know you know and what am i going to do what am i going to do it, it's more like you got to go okay i'm helping them make my matrix through my beliefs or my disbeliefs mm -hmm. as, as he says so understanding what you believe and what you don't believe in my opinion is a great and even an essential way to get out of the matrix because you have to see how you're making the circumstances of your life, in my opinion, the way you like them or you don't like them. And from there, you can see how to make them or unmake them according to your mm -hmm. own rules that you've set up for your life. Yes, absolutely. And you know what? Um, I I experienced it on, on this firsthand because I was, I was in Christianity for almost 30 years. And this was a belief system that that was a prison. It was a mind prison for me. And it, it you know, I, I felt that this system is where I navigate the, the life world or whatever you want to call it. And, and it made sense in a certain way. But when I got out of it and I unlearned those things, it took time. But then I finally understood I created certain experiences for myself based on a book or based on whatever people told me what I believed. And when I got out of that and I unlearned and then disbelieved those things, then everything changed because then I didn't have to follow those beliefs. So these beliefs are basically creating for us tracks on life and basically like train tracks you go on. And if you take away those tracks, you know, you can sidetrack, but it's sometimes better to sidetrack and then find your own track because it's just, um, you know, you create just maybe a straight track to hell mm. and, and that's not not going to lead to anywhere. And, and I think, you know, religion is one of those. It, it, was, it was horrible. And I felt so free when I got out of that. And, and I felt like just by doing that, I came out of my own matrix, at least 90%, you know, because that was a big one. I mean, most beliefs, if, if anybody studies, I would say study the, 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 the core, the root, where did they come from? Most people's beliefs aren't mm -hmm. even their own. You know, if you picked it up yes. from your parents or you picked it up from religion and it's like, I would always backtrack. People would say, do this. And I'd go, well, you don't look happy. Why would I take any advice? Or mm -hmm. you go to, you know, you go to religious temple, school, synagogue, whatever. And I would look around and say that people aren't so nice. How could they be talking about love when at the core, mm -hmm. they're not treating each other very loving. Yeah. Right? Or if there is supposedly a God that loves everybody, how could God say, I'll punish you forever if you don't listen to me? Because, you know, that doesn't mm -hmm. sound very loving so you know even as a yeah. little boy i would look at the belief system and go from my own sense it didn't make any sense and it allowed mm -hmm. me to you know tear away at it till i realized we all make it up as we go along so you might as well make up something that works for you instead of something someone told you that leaves you in a life of unhappiness mm -hmm. absolutely and and the third thing that was mentioned the doubt and i think that sometimes is real difficult even even for me after after training my my mental muscles for for some time because because you can lose the fear and you don't fear to do a certain move and you can use your beliefs but doubt is yeah will it happen will it not happen you know am i going to succeed on this route or not and that is quite a poison in a way i mean i think you need to have a certain natural level of doubt because you cannot just go do something and believe yes this will happen because that becomes your belief right you know what i mean I so there's see. a fine there's a fine line between being mindless and just being believing and not having doubt about certain things so so yeah the doubt is is i think is is also a good thing so once you know that this is from your heart this is not from your mind and this is not the should you know, this is the, I want to do, then you should set your mind to take your first step and then try not to doubt too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, maybe you mean potential downfalls for an action, which gives you doubt. I mean, mm -hmm. every, every action can have 
negative as far as you see them, let's say reactions or mm-hmm. consequences. But yeah. you know, ultimately, if you find that you need to do something, you have to figure out how to do it, regardless mm-hmm. of all of the above, doubts, beliefs, uh, training, religions, whatever. And uh, for me, and I would see for anybody that needs to do something, you know, if see how you fooled yourself. Barnabas, uh, I'll, I'll plug his his other uh, uh, channel here. He's, he said he started one called Fools and Sages. I'm hoping to be on there soon. And uh, yeah. it sounds like something I haven't watched it yet that uh, our viewers maybe could check it out because it could be very interesting. I think we've all been a fool. We've all been a sage. And, uh, you know, and as you get older, maybe you realize you've been more fool than sage in so many ways, but that takes you away from being a fool and allows you to be more sage by understanding how many mistakes you've made and how, you know, the, the, the Matrix movies are great. Some books are great. It's all fantastic in getting the analogies and seeing what's possible. But, you know, unless you get off your ass and go have the experiences for yourself, whatever it is, you're, you're, you're just taking someone another's word for something, you know, whether it's a movie Absolutely. or a book or me or Barnabas, I wouldn't take anybody's word for anything. You know, go figure yeah, it out for yourself. Yeah, exactly. Don't take our word for it. Experience it for yourself. I think I think that, that's that's the biggest um, biggest problem I see in this community of the so called research or truther community. We talked about this just before the video. Is that people look at our videos, they watch us, and they they are like, yeah, this is great, and they learn new things from us, and and so on. But but you have to fucking do shit. You know, that's, that's the, that's the end of it. There's there's just no way around it. You just can't trick the system. You know, you have to get off your ass and do shit and go out of your way and experience life, whether bad is or or good and, and just do it because otherwise it's not going to happen. And, and I have a great mentor in this called Seth Gordon. He, he helped me on this because I'm a creative person and creatives are very, um, very much used to just, you know, being that dreams and create things and think about things, but not creating it actually, not delivering it. Mm. And he said, he said that even for creatives, they have to learn to ship. So he said he became successful, not because he created great products. He said he created lots of, lots of bad products and books but he kept shipping and shipping is when you deliver, you start the project and you, you finish it, or at least test until it proves it, it can be proven to be good or bad. So shipping, delivering is so important. And I think, you know, you have to do that. You cannot do that just by listening to me or, or you, you have to do something. And, and that's how you test the waters. Yeah, you're a creative being. And if all you create is what other people tell you, then that's where you're going to be. Right? And if or you, your thoughts, you know, yeah. your thoughts is not going to help you create things. You know, it's, it's just thoughts. You have to actually do things. Like if you, if you wanted to write, you always wanted to write a book, it's not going to help you on the long run to learn about how to write a book and to listen to podcasts and videos from great authors. You can, you can, you can help you generally speaking to learn up um, some kind of knowledge, but you actually have to open word editor, or whatever, and you have to write the first letter and the first words, and then the first page and the second page yeah. and so on. You know, so I, I heard a story once where someone said that, can you write a shitty book? You know, when a guy wanted to write a book and you go, sure, I can write a shitty book. So you write a book. Can I do shitty videos? My first videos, I, I've deleted the first couple of dozen because they were shitty videos, I thought. Mm-hmm. But, you know, eventually you get better. You learn from your mistakes. You move on. You sacrifice what you didn't know to pick up what you do know. And, uh, you know, perhaps, uh, Barnabas, this is, uh, you know, kind of coming to an ending on, on how to uh, do things. Get off your ass and do something, no matter what it is. You have, <laughs> yes. You know, you have hopes, Absolutely. you have you have beliefs, Absolutely. you have, you have uh, fears, you have doubts. We all do. And it's working with them instead of running away mm-hmm. from them or hiding them or pretending they don't exist that can help you get out of your own matrix, I would say. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. That's what it is. Preach it. All right. Well, I'm going to get this together. I'm going to put it up. It's going to be on Barnabas's channel. It's going to be on our channel. We'll call it perhaps sacrificing to get out of the matrix or part of the matrix, but uh, I'll figure it out as we go along. And if anybody has any other topics they'd like us to discuss, Barnabas does some counseling as well as I, where perhaps we'll do something together one day as far as helping you out. 
Barnabas has lots of music. We'll leave the links below. Anybody wants to like or subscribe, they're welcome to do so. And uh, we enjoy them coming along for this ride and invite them to come along for other ones. Absolutely. See you in the next one, man. See you guys in the next one. Cheers. Can't make me lie, lie to my heart. No one tells me where I should start. Freedom first is what I say.